Hey viewers, welcome. Rapidly, what is an oath? What is the oath taking? And who takes an oath? Do people take such oaths? Well, we are here to find out. To begin with, let us look at the meaning of the oath. Oath is defined as an act or a statement that is including promises made to do something or to conduct oneself in a certain way. The oath is a solemn or formal promise to a certain authority or sovereignty. In monarchical systems, such oaths are taken while swearing in an officer or an office to offer or owe allegiance to his majesty or her majesty, the king or the queen. Kenya picks it from the English practice as tradition in which such oaths or oath taking or swearing in ceremonies come in because of the historical past of the Kenyan experience with the British colonial regime. The practice of oathing and oath taking can be traced back to 1926, where traditionally people do take oaths and they do swear in as some leaders of some sort, the community elders are sworn in in some traditional systems. But also people take oath while wedding, while wedding in church, for instance, when they are Christians, or wedding in Islamic traditions, but also in Hindu traditions, but also the civil marriages and customary marriages, they involve a lot of oath taking. Where again do we see oath taking? Oath taking is seen in the judiciary, in the courts. The traditions of the court systems, especially in Kenya, have maintained and sustained oath taking whenever one stands in court as a witness or one is to be a party in court before the judge. However, the Act of Parliament, known as Oaths and Statutory Declarations Act, Chapter 15 of the Laws of Kenya, that is meant to provide for the appointment of the Commissioners of Oath by the Chief Justice in the Republic of Kenya, still stands out to be the statute that regulates the sector of oath-taking and swearing in of individuals by oath. In this case, we find in the statute that the Chief Justice can appoint any practicing advocate of the High Court to be a commissioner of oath. And in that case, the individual must sign the role with the registrar of the high courts and must as well act within the rules of the court that are laid down by the chief justice. But this must be done also in fidelity to the constitution and also adherence to the rule of law and the obedience to God if it is in a religious atmosphere. First, we need to understand that in monarchical systems, such oaths are taken in allegiance to the royal authority that is his or her majesty. And in a republic, it is not the same as in the monarchical system because the highest authority in a republic is the state and the state is seen in the constitution 
which is the supreme book of law. And in that case, the swearing in is done using the constitution. And this one involves the state officers, the members of the judiciary or the judicial officers, as well as the executive officers, such as cabinet secretaries, as well as the legislators, when members of parliament are elected, before they take up their legislative role, they must be sworn in by an oath and by the constitution. And they owe their allegiance and loyalty to the constitution of the republic. In this case, it is a legal practice. It is not just a custom, but it is a legal custom. We also have customary as well as statutory oath-taking. And the statutory oath-taking is what has been covered and contemplated within the statute. But what is customary is what is in practice and it is not necessarily in writing. We need to look at the question of the religious oath taking in such religious statehood, but in a, a non-religious statehood, in a profane system, then the constitution is still sustained as the supremacy when it comes to oath taking. However, we need again here to look at situations in which in the constitution there shall be no state religion. In that case, the swearing in using a certain religion or faith-based kind of document is a question of looking at the statute and what the statute provides for because an individual can as well declare not to swear in you saying, for instance, the Holy Bible, if the person professes Christian faith, or the Holy Quran, if the person professes Islamic faith, but the Constitution, we should not portray any particular religion, but the state itself. From this perspective, oath is a legal practice and oath-taking is also provided for by the law. The statute places some penalties in a sense that any crime committed against the oath, like falsehood or lying under oath, perjury, is punishable by the law. And the punishment provided for here is in tune of the pecuniary punishment that is a fine of not more than 2,000 Kenya shillings. That is roughly less than 20 US dollars. And if not, then not more than six months in jail. Then those who disobey the declarations made meant can amount to the penalty of not more than 2,000 Kenya shillings. That is less than $20 and not more than two years in jail. The customary oath taking is more severe in the sense that it involves life. It is like treason and betrayal of the community. It is a capital offense. And in that case, in the African legal traditions, African oathing that we have witnessed was meant to be symbolized by the blood of animal. The animal blood traditionally symbolizes life. And that means the person swearing in 
with the blood is taking life commitment and such promise if violated can amount to death penalty since the year 2018 with an act number 18 of 2018 as scheduled the african oath taking was deleted from the statute the reasons amounting to this may be varied they may be varied because oath taking and swearing in must be public and must be done within the law and the spirit of the constitution when it is not done within the law and it is not done in public then such oath taking and swearing in can also mean something criminal or individuals swearing in to commit certain crime or carry out certain criminal activities that is seen especially by terrorists in which the terrorists swear in to terrorize and this is prohibited by the law.